Okay, guys, we are on to task three. Congratulations on making it this far. I'm very proud of you. Now, task three is about raising your AFQT score. Now, you'll remember in task one that I explained that this is um, made up of the math and verbal section of the test. So we are talking arithmetic reasoning, okay, math knowledge, paragraph comprehension, and word knowledge. Okay, now, what do these actually entail? Okay, what they are is arithmetic reasoning refers to math word problems. So these come in paragraph form. Okay, it's not always clear cut. You can't always see what exactly it is you're supposed to do or, you know, are you using fractions, percentages? Are you multiplying, dividing? What is the deal? So that is uh, one of the ones that people feel a little bit more challenged with it is not impossible there are ways to analyze the questions where it becomes easy for you to break it down and figure out what needs to happen um watch the wording here right that's important um then we have the math knowledge and this refers to high school math so you have um advanced algebra you have a geometry you have some um, but, you know, uh, really, I think that algebra and geometry are the ones that come up the most. You have the occasional pre-cal question, but it's not predominant. And then you have paragraph comprehension, which is really just a fancy way of saying reading comprehension. They're checking for main ideas, inferencing, whether you can out of context understand a word that was in the paragraph. And then you have the word knowledge, which is it which is essentially a vocabulary test, right? So um, they're going to give you academic wording and you need to show that you um, know what those words mean. Now, the question becomes why, Anna, you told me to think of my composite score in task one. Why are you telling me to focus on the AFQT? The reality is that the AFQT, the composite scores or line scores are going to help you get a specific job, right? But if you're not 100% sure or you want to see what possibilities are out there, focusing on the AFQT is a winner, right? Because it opens up more and better job opportunities. So remember when I told you, for instance, that for the Army, the um, entrance score was a 31? The reality is that they start to check. They have a table, okay, in which, depending on your score, they're trying to see your trainability, okay? Now, keep in mind that these guys invest over $50,000 a year in, in, I'm sorry, per um, enlisted person to train you. So they want to make sure that their investment is worth it. So at the end of the day, if you are scoring at a 31, then you're average, okay, to give you an idea. Now, what we want is, we don't want to be average, no. We want to be above average, excellent, outstanding, okay, we want to be above here. That's why I told you guys, you need to shoot for 30 more than that. If you did not finish high school and you um, got your GED, you're going to have to score, score over 50 anyway. So uh, keep in mind that the scores for people that did not graduate high school and um, finished a GED or some other accredited program are going to have different scores. You may need to talk to your recruiter about that. Then here's the one everybody loves, the enlistment bonuses and benefits. So yes, believe it or not, once they've determined that your trainability is outstanding, they want you to come on. They want you to come in because at the end of the day, you're the kind of person that they know they can invest in, right? Education level, we go back to what I was saying. If what you have is a GED or some other form of accredited high school program that you completed, then making sure you have a high AFQT score ensures that they're not going to give you any issues because normally a high school diploma is required to join uh, the armed forces. Now, score raising, what do I mean by this? Every now and again, so recruitment centers have quotas, right? They have a certain number of people that they're required to enlist in a period of time. And so at the end of the day, whenever you know, they have a lot of applicants. A lot of times they will raise um, the minimum score 
for you to go to maps and take your entry if um you know so that they can select from the better pool of candidates now i live in military city right san antonio texas so i've seen this happen a lot because there's a lot of inclination here for joining the military so ultimately Every now and again, they'll raise the scores just to make sure that they're picking the better candidate from the pool. Finally, you have waivers and exceptions. So if you, for some reason, are not eligible to be uh, in the armed forces, uh, maybe, you know, because of a, a potential uh, health condition, you have too many kids, they have things that you know your recruiter is going to talk to you about that could be a potential bump in the road. The reality is that if your AFQT score is high enough, it may allow for there to be a waiver because there is that much use for you in the armed forces. So it may be that you have specific jobs, right, because for your protection that they're going to put you in, but it would certainly make you eligible when you otherwise wouldn't have been. So hopefully that motivates you to see the importance of these four. Um, now that we've understood the reasons why, let's figure out how to raise it. Okay. There, <laughs> there are so many strategies here. And like I told you, because each of you learns differently, um, it would be impossible to list them all but i'll give you some that i know are bulletproof here right so first of all make sure you're reading every day it doesn't need to be a long thing it doesn't need to be um you know that you have a long novel in front of you uh no tolstoy or anything you can literally just grab a magazine a life magazine uh, um a uh, nat geo something that has academic uh, vocabulary in it, even the news, and just read a paragraph, two paragraphs, three paragraphs every day. Um, make sure that you're keeping up with that because it is a great way to absorb vocabulary. Crossword puzzles is another one that um, can kind of give you insight on new words and what they mean. They try to intentionally make them challenging. So any crossword games, stuff like that's always helpful for the word knowledge section and for the paragraph comprehension as well including new daily words. So whenever you're doing the first step, make sure that if there's a new word you learned and you're able to substitute and use it, go ahead and use it. Make a part, make it a part of your daily vocabulary, okay? That way you're not really even having to study. At that point, you're just expanding your word knowledge in general, which is going to be useful all around. Um, I also recommend practice using synonyms and antonyms. Um, we often <laughs> overuse words like good, bad, uh, I typically would give my students an example of, you know, um, if a person is going to the store, well, you know, we say go, we say walk. I'm sorry, I don't know why this person has three legs, but ultimately we use the word go and walk. And these are such basic words. At the end of the day, how is that person going? Like, are they gliding? Are they skipping? Are they running? Like, there's so many substitutes you can use. So find rich words um, that you can use instead of your daily basic vocabulary and make sure that you're actually using them in your, you know, regular speech pattern. In terms of the math section, I would honestly tell you that you need to try and analyze the tests. We, you know, we call them postmortems. Like we look at the test, we break apart the question so that we can try and find patterns, right? Try and decipher questions, try and make sure if there are clues inside the question that um, are going to give you some indication of how it's solved and that are going to help you eliminate answers, right? So remember to use test taking skills, eliminate the answers you know aren't right, Make sure that you are taking your time. When you take the t um, computer-based test, the way that it works is it gives you a question that's at a certain difficulty level, right? And if you get it correct, it goes up. So if you're starting to get harder questions, hey, you're doing something right. The second that you start getting questions that are too, that the question, the time, sorry, at that moment, if you miss a question, the difficulty level is going to go back down again. And if you miss again, then it's going to go back down. And at this point, the test is adaptive, right? You want it to start going up and you want it to start getting hard because it's showing a higher competency level. OK, 
okay? So don't be afraid if you're taking the computer-based test and you're starting to see hard questions. It means that you're doing something right. At the end of the day, I say use your test-taking skills because it's gonna start getting hard at some point and you may have to eliminate answers, make educated guesses, um, and don't be afraid to do so. Have a strategy for that. Lastly, prioritize the skills that you need the most, right? Use task one and two, um, as I taught you before, so that you can kind of break that down. Make a study plan. If out of these four, you feel like you need to work most on math knowledge because you know you don't remember geom geometric formulas uh, as well, or you need more word knowledge because English is your second language. I don't know. I, ultimately, figure out which of these is the one that you need to focus the most and make sure that you prioritize the skills that are taught in that section and plan accordingly. Let's go.